Inside Politics with a Punch. Come out swinging out at 556-9696. Call Jeff Cruer now. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very pleased now to uh, bring on a, a special guest. He is a, a media political strategist. He's a CEO of AMWPR in uh, New York City, and uh, a lot to talk to uh, Adam Weiss about. And uh, Adam, how are you, sir? Good morning. Thank you, Jeff. I've been the whole well, I'm back. I'm going to ask you first about uh, the media and the difference in, in how they have treated uh, Donald Trump versus uh, Joe Biden. Uh, we just saw press conference the other day where they uh, served up uh, softballs and were lap dogs and uh, it was a much different situation than how they treated Donald Trump uh, where they uh, hit him with zingers and tried to humiliate him throughout his uh, tenure as president. Uh, why is that, Adam? I mean, I think they're so vested in the ideology. I don't think it makes any economic sense what they do at all because if you had a press conference, even the timing, right? If you're doing a press conference with the president of the United States, you think they would do the press conference at six o'clock, eight o'clock. You get the most views. The most people are home. I don't think. I think Joe Biden by seven, eight, eight o'clock is taking a nap. So I don't think his cognitive abilities would be as sharp. Not that it was sharp at one o'clock. So I mean, to do a major press conference, first press conference is one o'clock. That's a that's a red flag in itself, right? And then to have a cheat sheet with the actual photos. That's like if you're doing a red carpet event and you have the photos of the individual you have to call on. He doesn't know the 10 reporters he's going to call on, the White House press corps. He's going to give me a break, right? And like you said, these were softballs. The reason we call it softballs is they're so easy to hit. We're the big one we are growing up. The big ball, we're going to hit it easily. Hard balls were harder to hit. These were softballs. Compared to what we used to watch with Donald Trump, those Donald Trump press conference, you could have sold them on pay-per-view. It was so exciting. I mean, it's the... If they really wanted to help, you know, you know, shrink the budget deficit, they could have sold pay-per-view events for Donald Trump press cops and they could have made a few million. Because <laughs> they really were like a WWF, WWE, or UFC matches. But he, the way he had to battle the, the press, the press corps, right? Steph, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was quite a spectacle. Jim Acosta, all these others that tried to uh, constantly humiliate him, and he was battling them, and he was taking them on, and he was constantly available. Another difference besides the uh, treatment is the availability. Uh, Donald Trump made himself available constantly, and this president has done one press conference in 65 days, is very unavailable uh, to the media. And uh, I believe that's because of his uh, cognitive issues, his uh, mental health issues fact that I think he has uh, got some sort of uh, sickness that he's dealing with. What do you think it is, Adam? I think there's, they're, you know, he, they're playing a game that it's easily, they, it's easily done because the media plays along with it. Whatever they say, the media does. And it's not because, I wrote a column, it's not because there's not exciting news. Like, Trump was very exciting because he was a genius. His ability to communicate, which made him a celebrity in the first place, right? Before, there is exciting issues like the Two Stone Pipeline, the transgender executive orders. All these issues are really important to the American people. Not only won't they, you know, when a Republican does these kind of policy issues, not only do they cover it hard, they cover it, they move the story forward. What I mean by move the story forward is the audience, they'll go find, let's say it's the Keystone Pipeline, Joe Biden does the executive order. They, they cover the first story, then they'll go to Pennsylvania, they'll go to West Virginia, and they'll say, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, you're about to lose your home, and you're about to lose your job. How do you feel about this? Those are interesting human interest stories because of the policies. Not only do they cover the human interest part, they don't even cover the first story of the mainstream media. So we're getting we're getting such activist journal, journalists that not even cover the original stories. In the past, even with Barack Obama or Bill Clinton, Jimmy Carter, they would cover the, the policy. They never move story forward when it's a Democrat because they don't want to hurt. They don't want to hurt their approval ratings. They always do a Republican. Donald Trump says something bad on Twitter or he signs an executive order. They're rushing to the uh, advocacy groups. How do you feel about this? Donald Trump's going to hurt women's rights. Donald Trump's going to hurt seniors. So, but now they're not covering the actual issue. It's it's just mind-boggling. We have a press corps just lapdogs. Yeah, it, it, it is mind-boggling. It's a disgrace, and uh, they should be ashamed of themselves to call themselves journalists. Another issue that I think is uh, interesting to note, I just got uh, reports about the ratings for some of these major cable networks, and they're down big time. 
And I guess that shows the difference uh, in uh, Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. Uh, the fact that uh, you know you had the confrontation, you had the excitement of dealing with Trump, you had the constant stories versus a guy they're trying to protect, uh, a guy who is, you know, certainly not the same type of leader. And uh, the ratings are reflecting that. Does that surprise you, Adam? Yeah, because A, Donald Trump was exciting TV. His base loved him, right? His base, whether they were young, old, you know, they would watch it online or they would watch it on TV. They loved it. Then the left loved him because he was the boogeyman. So they would watch every word he could say. They'd make up lies, misleading what he said. And they would, they would you know, get it trending on Twitter, call him a liar. So you had both sides watching everywhere. He was a great rating. You know, MSNBC, for four years, we had conspiracy theories all over the map, as well as CNN. So their ratings took off. You had a whole, a whole, you know, segment of population believing everything they said on the left. Now, he's not the president anymore. They cover him a lot, but he's not as much the president anymore. So he can't be major boogeyman. They've been looking for the new boogeyman, right? They've Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know, Lauren Bobbitt, Congresswoman. They're looking for that new one so they can reach on to and attack every day. But they don't have it. A, Congress, a congressperson is not big enough. So we end up on a stream of boring stories because they won't cover Biden. Like I said, I don't think it's just because if they're so vested in their ideology, they don't want to hurt Biden's popularity. They don't want to hurt his approval rating. They don't want to hurt his policy. And they're in favor of all the policies. So they want to. They don't want the American people to know the truth. Does the American know the truth? Hey, American people, Joe Biden, the president, just signed an executive order. Your daughter in high school has to compete against a male if he decides a day, that day he decides to play in women's wrestling. Are you in favor of that? I guarantee 80% of the American people will be, what? What kind of executive order is that? I bet you <laughs> if we took a look at most people don't even know about that, right? Yeah. We do. We're in politics 24-7, you know, but most right. people, I bet, don't even know how zany, crazy that executive order is. So that's why they won't even cover these things. They don't want to hurt. So, this, so yeah. economically, it doesn't make sense what they're doing because their ratings getting in the tank right now. But right. it's the one business in America, their ideology takes precedent over economics. You know, uh, their ideology is hurting their profession. It's hurting their ratings. Uh, it's hurting their uh, employer. Uh, it's hurting their future prospects uh, in the industry, uh, certainly their right. reputation, everything. And yet they continue to do it. They're so invested. One uh, final thing I wanted to talk to you about, and we're visiting with uh, Adam Weiss, media and political uh, strategist and uh, CEO of uh, AMWPR in New York City, is New York. Andrew Cuomo facing uh, all kinds of uh, scandals. Uh, do you think he's going to survive? Uh, it looks like he's hunkering down. You know, that I... The things about the women that they're attacking them, I don't want to, if it's a Republican or a Democrat, you know, you said some rude things, you said some unethical things. It's amazing if that's the thing that takes him down. You know, there's a new thing that he took, that he showed favoritism towards his family, towards his staff, and he sent these special tests, health officials upstate to Hampton to take tests. That's bad, too. That's really bad. And the actual, the deaths in the nursing home is terrible. If the media, again, if the media, if the media did their job, we really should have known all this. And... 12, 13 months ago. Mean that meanwhile, they were giving him Emmy Awards, book deals, covers of magazines, J, uh, you know, uh, late night talk show appearances. It's really ridiculous. The Trump bad guy back then, Cuomo good guy, right? So everything that Trump did was the bad guy. We have Cuomo as we champion him on a stool. Memo was pathetic. His daily press conference. He's talking about you know Sunday dinners with his daughter, his love brother. Yeah. That's, what are we watching here? This is you know a tragedy and what's happening here and you're, this is what he's discussing and then, every day. And then we, we got a roll Adam but then of course you had the, the whole uh, scandal of his brother uh, covering him and uh, palling around with him as people were dying and uh, it was just so disgusting and uh, I certainly hope that the people of New York can and, uh, get rid and, of him and, and find a better leader uh, I think he's despicable for so many different reasons and uh, we'll see what happens. Adam Weiss, uh, look forward to having you back on. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning uh, great discussion, yeah, and a big thank you to uh, all of our uh, great viewers on A Real America's Voice. Thoughts, comments, ideas, suggestions, email me at jeff at wgso.com. Check out crewair.net. A lot more coming your way on.